I think it's well worth revisiting that document and, and assessing why we aren't further down the track. But also, you know, in terms of where, we, where Cambodia is historically, one of the problems that's been referred to today about land grabbing and the scale of dispossession in a predominantly agricultural society is of, of, of uh, the orders of magnitude have not been seen since the late 1960s or the early 1970s, and that ought to worry people. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people who can't feed themselves, and we all know that historically that doesn't tend to end too well. A very good point. Uh, implicitly providing any kind of material support for a military that is taking over this land extrajudicially, uh, allowing people to suffer, as was clear on the, uh, the video, uh, when they do so, uh, that's wholly unacceptable. And clearly, it's the military that's been uh, doing this. So I, I think as the chairman suggested, it's something we ought to uh, look at. Uh, there, there, as you suggest, there is leverage here. And, and we want to talk with the embassy. We want to talk with the State Department uh, and with the International Relations Committee. But uh, I trust that the Cambodian government is on notice that, uh, uh, that this caucus and I think this Congress is uh, aware that uh, we're going to have to respond to some of these uh, massive human rights violations uh, and, and lack of any kind of reasonable judicial process. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yeah, and before I yield the Congress, I just want to follow up. Uh, this Camber Rouge issue. I, I, I mentioned in my opening statement that uh, the international co-prosecutor William Smith of uh, Australia submitted his recommendations to the co-investigating co judges that five more suspects be investigated for crimes against humanity and other offenses dating back to the reign of terror. Now, the prime minister's response was that this more arrests could trigger a civil war. So I'm assuming that that's the response that we will get. I just, I just really quick, I mean, which you you respond to that? Come on. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dad said, come on. Okay. I mean, the, I, mean, I, I, mean I, I assume the consensus is that it won't. I mean, I, I've always, I mean, my, my view has always been that, you know, justice, you know, does not uh, result in more chaos than actually it. It helps uh, it people feel have more confidence in the system, and I think that's important. It's a it's a tactic uh, that works as uh, for the prime minister. Every time the court has to make a decision, the prime minister goes uh, to the public and uh, decide what he has to say, what he ha what the court has to order has to uh, follow at the end. It's a tactic. And I think the international community uh, has uh, bought into it, but luckily on this event, uh, this uh, situation uh, with the ECCC, it seems that um, the court, the international, the Kremlin court will not listen and will pursue with it. I think we have to be very aware that uh, the Prime Minister is very uh, skillful at putting out these messages um, that uh, the U.S. Um, as well as all the other donors must uh, stand on the principles of human rights and I'm very, very uh, um, grateful and uh, hopeful that after this hearing there will be some kind of changes. And, uh, one, one last thing. Oh, sure. Uh, Congressman McGovern, um, to respond to you, Congressman uh, Moran, uh, in this room you can see more than half of the people attending here are Cambodians living here who are mainly, mostly US citizens now. They are here because they're concerned about Cambodia, as Congresswoman Sangas just brought up. And you challenged me, and I challenged them, that you are here as US citizens. You knock on your lawmakers' doors, and here they are. They are from your states. And the last point is that on the elections, we, it's not a matter of guessing who can be the winner. I'm sorry, uh, Congressman Moran. I think the real issue is how can we make 
the National Election Committee neutral, independent, and the playing field as leveled as possible. We in opposition believe that we can win. Yes, if there is a true environment that brings away, put aside the culture of fear. And again, my last point for today is that we in opposition, in parliament, we need to have our right as minority in parliament. We have no rights and that is not what uh, is going to be helpful for the development of Cambodia. And until we hand with address this issue in parliament, uh, I think donors, uh, aid to Cambodia, will um, be facing more challenges because there is no representation for people who have no voices and no human no, no rights. Thank you. You join the answer? Yep, I, I'm sorry. I just uh, respond back to the concern of the Prime Minister concerning about the civil war could be happen again. <laughs> uh, it's based on the political will of the government because I put a question here. Yes. My question is, the armed force, who is controlling the armed force now? So, through my, my question, I think that the people understand. From my perspective, the civil war cannot be happening. Thank you. Thank you. So, I hope that the uh, Khmer Rouge Tribunal, the ECCC, will show independence. The co-prosecutor, international co-prosecutor, would like to indict five more, in fact six more, but one died already, so it's, uh, there are more five. I hope that this tribunal can go on until it finishes, because it's very important to show to Cambodian people that we cannot allow impunity, we cannot tolerate impunity. I know that it's not... Uh, uh, many, there are only five now, and plus five is ten, so most of the Cambodians are very frustrated, ask us the question, why only five? Because they are killed more than almost two million, why we are going to uh, prosecute only ten, you know, only five at the beginning. So, but it's better five than nothing, and we have to take this responsibility, we have to go until the end. Otherwise, if this tribunal stop now, I think that it will be more harmful for Cambodian people. So please, help this tribunal to finish its work, at least for five, but if they can do for ten, it will be better. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to yield on to my colleague from Massachusetts, uh, Congressman Sargis. I just wanted to thank you all very much for your testimony. I have to say that um, it's very telling and obviously it's been very important for me to hear firsthand your stories. And as I said at the outset, it's so true that while this is very much about Cambodia, it also has such an impact on the many Cambodian Americans here in this room and throughout this country uh, who have to continue to bring these issues to bear. But let's just hope that this is a good beginning uh, as, we, as you have been so bravely willing to air some of the great differences you have with your government and your great concerns, and then it's just uh, the first in the past. But I want to thank you very much. Uh, let me just conclude with a couple of observa observations. Again, um, the fact that this room is packed, uh, I think, demonstrates that there are a great deal of uh, there's a great deal of interest. Uh, and a great deal of concern, and I think that's an important message uh, for the government of Cambodia, that people here do care, and, and people are watching very, very closely. Um, and not in, a, not in a confrontational or hostile way, it is that people want the very best for the people, uh, who have gone through a lot, uh, but you want a government that is, uh, that is credible, that, uh, that deals with issues of impunity, and that upholds a high standard of human rights. I'll also say that, you know, I think uh, people like you uh, who come forward uh, and demand better from your government are, are, are patriots. I mean, I, we criticize our government all the time, not because we don't like whoever's in the White House or who's ever in a particular position. We do so because we love our country, because we think it can do, be 
better. We're not perfect. You know, we, we've had some human rights challenges too in the United States, and we're trying to work through them. Uh, but I think it's important that uh, people remain committed to this high standard of human rights. I just want to close by uh, asking that uh, Chairman Fabio Vega stay with be part of the record. He's, uh, he's chairing a hearing in his Asia Pacific subcommittee. He can't be here, but he's kind of from a rant point out he's very much interested in this. But you've given us a lot of information. We have a lot of assignments as a result of this hearing. We're going to work with you. We're going to do some follow-up. Uh, but uh, this has been, this is, I've learned a lot. I think we all have it. So I appreciate very much your time and your testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you.